Hello all, welcome. This is the 2016, this is where it comes from, the course description. This is FRQ number two. It is a no calculator problem. So here I go. Consider the function f given by f of x equals x times e to the negative 2x, when x is bigger than zero. Find the limit of f of x. Well, this is just one point here. It's one point basically for the answer. So if you get one, I'm sorry, if you get zero, you get the point. Now, how do you do this one? Well, the best way to do this is to just change this e to the negative 2x and just move it to the bottom when you have a negative exponent like this. Um, most of you will be inclined to say, ah, L'Hopital's rule. And you can use L'Hopital's rule if you want to. There's nothing wrong with that. You get one over e to the 2x times two. But you don't really need to do that here because if you know your and behavior models in which one of these dominates, exponentials dominate over x's. This isn't really a zero over zero. This is, well, yeah, it's, or infinity over infinity, I should say. It really ends up that this guy dominates more so than this, so it ends up to be a zero as an answer. It's just one point for the answer I need. So then as you move farther, the next question says, find the maximum value of f. Justify your answer. Well, first of all, one thing you'll want to notice here is the word value. Value means you want the y value. So we need a maximum, we need a y value, so where does that take place? Well, you have two basic tests, the first derivative test and the second derivative test. You already have the function, so the first thing you probably need to do is take the first derivative. So if you kind of go and take a look here, the first derivative is um, needs to be done by product rule. So the first is x, so the first times the derivative of the second, e to the negative 2x times negative 2, and then add that with the second times the first. So the derivative of the first. So the derivative of the first is 1, and you get e to the negative 2x. Now at this point, you have to determine when this is 0. Without the use of a calculator, what are you going to do? Well, the best way to do this is probably to factor out your common things, e to the negative 2x and e to the negative 2x. And when you do that, you get 1 minus 2x. Now, you're trying to find when the first derivative equals 0. The first derivative is going to be equal to 0 when if this is 0, the first part, or the second part is 0, because 0 times anything is going to be 0. It's called the zero product property. Well, e to the negative 2x is never going to be 0. That's 1 over e to the 2x, and you can't get 0 there. But this one you can. So set this equal to 0, bring over the 2x, divide by 1, you get x equals 1 half. Now, how are we allocating points? Well, first of all, you get two points for your first derivative. Um, I'll probably be able to give you one point if you made a simple mistake. But if you, like, for example, the negative 2, you got the chain piece, you'll get one out of the two. But if you didn't know to do product rule, you're not going to get probably any of these points. So um, zero, uh, zero points for getting product rule, and two points if you get it the same, if you get it correct. Now, if you didn't factor this out and you still get this top step, you're still going to get the two points. It doesn't really matter. This is just an easier way to solve. The second thing is you have to identify that negative half, or positive half as a candidate. This is the only candidate. So if I check, don't forget x has to be greater than zero. So if I check like zero or 0.25 or whatever, it doesn't matter, um, you're gonna get a positive value, which tells you the function's increasing if the derivative is positive. And then when the derivative is negative, like checking one here, one minus two is negative one, and the derivative is negative, you're going to get a maximum. It is the only maximum. So you really don't have to do candidate test here because this is really the only maximum when x is greater than zero. So um, the answer is this. If you don't have, because it says value, value means the y value. If you don't plug this half back into the original equation up here, and you don't have to simplify it. You can absolutely leave it like this if you want to. But this is a simplified version. Anything that's similar, that's exactly the same as this, will give you possibility for the answer point, but the justification needs to go along with that. So the justification, you cannot just use a chart when you're justifying. So I use the chart to clear up my thoughts, but your thoughts need to be communicated with words.
words. And that basically says less than half, better to say zero to half, the derivative is positive, and greater than half, the derivative is negative, therefore the function increases and decreases after half, so you have a maximum value. So you need kind of all of this for your justification point. And then you absolutely need the y value for your answer. Small little mistakes often happen. Now when we move to part C, part C is the tough one. This is a, this is a challenging part of this problem. This is an improper integral. So you need to um, evaluate it or show that it diverges. So how do we do that? Well, the first way to do that is to figure out how on earth am I going to take the antiderivative of this. Now, you might think u substitution, and if you want to try that, you can. If u equals, um, if you want to think of negative 2x, you could, and then your du is going to be negative 2. Now, if you did that, you're going to think to yourself, well, there's no way to get rid of this x. Remember, that's our goal with u sub. So that's not the way to go. It's not a memorized item, it's not a power rule, it's not u sub. I don't think it's partial fraction because there's no denominators. It is integration by bumps. That is uv minus the integral of v du. That is the integration by parts form. So you need to assign which one of these is u and which one's v. So the u should be, by choosing it by like it, there are no logarithms. There are no inverse trigs. There is a polynomial. The polynomial is the x. So that's how you choose your u. So I like to set it up like this, my u and my dv. And then the derivative of x is 1 dx. The antiderivative to go from dv to v is the same exact thing because it's e. So e to the negative 2x. But you have to divide by the chain piece. So this is all over negative 2 or multiplying by negative half. So let's kind of go ahead and take a look at how we're going to assign these points. First of all, you need the antiderivative. If you did not recognize this as integration by parts at all, probably going to get very little points here. Um, definitely a zero for the antiderivatives. Now, this point here, the limit part, it is possible to get this point if you did this. right there. So limit is b approaches 0, 0 to b, letter is irrelevant of the function. Remember with integration by, by uh, I'm sorry, with improper integrals you must always make them proper and that's how you do this. So once you do this material here, my form, the way I like to do it is to go um, from u to v and then I do this little backwards out thing, u v minus an arrow of u. So my u v is here since I'm evaluating it from zero to B, I would do zero to B then. So that's my U V simplified here, minus the integral of V du. Well, minus and negative makes this a positive. If you left it as minus and negative in here, that's perfectly okay. So now the antiderivative is needed here, and then down to here too. You need to kind of carry these through to make sure you did it all correctly. Because once you do integration by parts, you need to do a second antiderivative in there, and that's this part right there. So one more time, you have to antiderivative of this, which is pretty simple. You divide by another negative two chain piece, and that becomes a four again. Any version of this that's equivalent is certainly acceptable. As long as you're at this step and you're correct, you're for sure getting the two points. If you wrote the limit here with that function, you're for sure getting the third point. Now the answer is, do you know how to evaluate all this with that limit? Well, all you have to do is have the answer. It's one thing. Without a calculator, they know that you, if you were honest here, that you would have done it correctly. But just a real quick conversation though. How do you do it? Well, if I look at this and I plug in a B on this factored form, this becomes negative E to the negative 2B, which becomes 1 over, oops, negative one, sorry, we're gonna the mouse here is tricky. And then you get e to the two x. Now if I do this and b goes to infinity, this is zero. So this entire thing when I substituted the b and I'm evaluating the limit, that whole thing right here, no matter how you do it, this is going to be zero. So the only thing I really need to do is evaluate it when it's zero. 
So if I plug in a zero, either the zero is one, but there's a negative, so negative one. And then plugging in zero here, zero over x is zero, and so zero over two is zero, plus a fourth. So that's just one fourth. And then don't forget your minus a negative, and you end up with a positive. So that's how you do it. It's not bad. Um, good luck with this one. It's a very tricky question.